Welcome back to the channel. So after visiting Megiddo, we then hopped over the Valley of Megiddo and visited Nazareth. Now Nazareth is the location of Jesus' hometown that he spent the majority of his life in until his ministry started. Now back in the first century, Nazareth was a small, insignificant Jewish village. The town's insignificance is evident in the first chapter of John's Gospel. In John chapter 1, verse 45 through 46, Philip found Nathanael and told him, We have found the one Moses wrote about in the law, and about whom the prophets also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Nathanael asked. Come and see, said Philip. Today, it is a city in Israel, but it is predominantly an Arab town with about 70% of the people being Muslim. Now, we were brought to a place here called Nazareth Village, which is a place that recreates what life was like in the first century. They have people dressed up and performing various skills of the day, and to me, the idea of this sounded phony or fake and not very appealing. I mean, here we are in the land of Israel, and we are visiting a place that has people dressed up and putting on a show, but I ended up being pleasantly surprised and enjoyed it very much. Now, unlike most of the locations visited on this trip, We were not shown much in the form of archaeological findings, but there was one on site that they showed us. This is a wine press from the first century that was uncovered here at the site. This being around the time of Jesus is pretty cool, but trust me, in my later reviews there are fascinating places that we know Jesus walked, taught, and performed miracles, so stay tuned for those. Now, let's look briefly at some of the things inside Nazareth Village. Though this place is a recreation from the first century, Everything that you see here was built using the same methods and materials that would have been used in Jesus' day. First up was an olive grove. Olive trees can live anywhere from 500 to a few thousand years, and the way you can tell if you're looking at an old olive tree is the older ones have a really thick trunk. Here is one believed to be about four to 500 years old. Now, while we were walking through the olive grove, a gentleman came and told us to get off the roadway because the sheep were coming. So as we stood there and we waited and we waited, The sheep never came. After we left there, we encountered the shepherds. And they talked to us for a few minutes, but they still didn't have their sheep. Next, we were shown an example of what a wealthy person's tomb in the first century would have looked like. And then as we continued to walk, guess what we found? Those silly sheep. Then, we were shown an olive press, which was common in the day. And then after that, We were shown how pottery would have been made in the first century, and this is a replica of a kiln that would have been used. Then we came to a carpenter shop. Now, I put that in quotations because our Western culture kind of has the assumption that people of the day only worked with wood, but actually they were predominantly working with stone. Now, here's the gentleman walking us through all the different tools that were used during this time frame. Next up, we visited a weaver shop and were shown how someone would have made clothing from sheep's wool, which was pretty cool. And then we were brought to a recreation of a Jewish synagogue, but more on this in a minute. So what are some of the other scriptures in the Bible that mention Nazareth, besides what I shared at the beginning from the book of John? In Luke chapter 1, verse 26 and 27, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. Now, after Jesus was born, they fled to Egypt until Herod the Great died. When they came back, they settled in Nazareth. Matthew chapter 2, verse 22 and 23. Having been warned in a dream, he, being Joseph, withdrew to the district of Galilee. He went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets that he would be called a Nazarene. Now, Nazareth wasn't mentioned in the Old Testament, so it's unclear what prophecy Matthew is referring to, but some believe it could be referring to Isaiah 11, verse 1, being the branch of Jesse. A shoot will come from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Now, what does a branch have to do with Nazareth? Well, one of the Hebrew words for branch is netzer, and some believe Nazareth came from the word netzer. Now, let's return back to the synagogue. They had someone reenact Jesus' reading of the scrolls from Isaiah that we find in Luke chapter 4, verses 16 through 30. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus visited Nazareth after being tempted by the devil in the wilderness. In verses 18 and 19, Jesus read from the scroll of Isaiah. 
The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And then in verse 21, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Now, the people were amazed at Jesus at this point, but their amazement would soon turn to anger very shortly. In verse 24, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. Then in verses 25 through 27, Jesus reminds them that Elijah and Elisha performed miracles to non-Jews because they had faith. Well, this infuriated the Jews. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town. They took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Jesus escaping here was a miraculous moment. But I'd also like to point out that it's quite possible that this brow of the hill that the Jews took Jesus to could have been, in fact, overlooking the Valley of Megiddo. Now, it's pure speculation on my part, but it is possible. So this concludes my review of Nazareth and the Nazareth village. Now, next up will be the review of Dan. This is in northern Israel, and let me tell you, it was so beautiful. It was one of my favorite spots. But until next time, thank you for watching and God bless.